Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? On a dark and stormy, rainy night here from where I'm coming from, I, of course, am Sierra Daredevil, bringing you yet another episode of our Monday Night War What If series in TEW 2020. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the series, this is a series where we take WCW in 1995 and we try to take it through the Monday Night Wars, but this is set in an alternate timeline where Hulk Hogan and other friends of his never came to WCW. This is a set in a timeline where Hulk Hogan is still running wild in WWF, along with his best friend Brutus Beefcake and everybody else that would have made the jump had uh, Hogan come over to WCW. We are, of course, on the road to Halloween Havoc, six days out with this episode, and we have big ones coming as we have, of course, the United States Championship on the line in, it, in what's been building up for months now, Brian Pillman taking on the champion, Steve Austin. We, of course, have a bunch of other matches, including the tag team titles on the line, Harlem Heat defending against the Blue Bloods in a rematch from Fall Brawl. And, of course, the world title on the line, Ric Flair defending the title against Randy Savage. But that is six days from now. Today is the go-home show of Nitro for that big pay-per-view and I think it's about time we dive right into the action. We open up tonight's Nitro in front of 2,053 people with an 86-rated segment where the show opens with Roddy Piper hyping the pay-per-view. Hi- Piper is is uh, hyping up the pay-per-view. He's, he's doing essentially what I just did. He's hyping some of the matches. Flair comes out to the ring, and he's overconfident. He is through the moon with his confidence about how he's going to defeat Randy Savage at Halloween Havoc, and he's going to continue through the end of 1995 as your WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Savage comes out, interrupting him, and says, if he's so great, if he's going to be the champion, for, he's going to be the champion for the rest of the year, and Flair's like, yeah! And Savage is like, you're going to be the you're going to be the number one guy here in WCW for the rest of the year. Yeah. Well, then you have no problem being in a tag team matchup here in the main event tonight. Yeah. Wait, what? Flair's overconfidence caused him to end up accepting a challenge that he didn't mean to accept. And uh, so Flair's losing his mind at this point. And Piper goes, well, that's interesting. Savage, I like that. I like that idea. I like that idea. Flair is going to be in a tag team matchup here in the main event of uh, Nitro. And that's when Sting comes out. And Sting says, you know what? I agree with Savage. That's a brilliant idea. That's a great idea. Let's have Ric Flair in the main event in a tag team matchup. You know what would also be a great idea? You see, last week... Randy Savage, the number one contender for the world title, and Steve Austin, the United States champion, had to take on Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader in the main event of Nitro. So what if this week we flip that stuff around? How about Savage's opponent, Ric Flair, and Austin's opponent, Brian Pillman, team up to take on Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader's opponents for this coming Sunday night, yours truly, and... I just now realized I forgot to show the Saturday night show ahead of time. Your uh, His tag team partner replacing Lex Luger in that matchup, none other than Barry Windham. So the match place is going crazy, and uh, that is what's going to be happening later tonight in the main event. It is going to be Sting and Barry Windham taking on Brian Pillman and Ric Flair. Before we continue on with that show... Um, we are going to quickly switch over to this because I really should have shown you that part. <laughs> I just kind of goofed that up there. Um, so Saturday night, some stuff happened. Um, you know what? We'll we'll say that we'll say that this is part of a this is part of Nitro. This is a recap part of Saturday night that's happening in Nitro right now after that big big opening segment for Nitro. So. Not a whole lot of big stuff happened on Saturday night, although we did have, um, as you see there, Sting and Wyndham had a backstage promo, which led to Wyndham taking Luger's spot at Havoc. 
Luger is apparently too injured to wrestle at Havoc officially, and so Barry Windham is going to take his spot in that tag team matchup. So at, at Halloween Havoc is now going to be Barry Windham and Sting taking on Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader. We also had in the main event of Saturday night, Diamond Dallas Page and a man who he paid off to help him out in the in the main event of Saturday night, VK Wall Street, defeat Alex Wright and Eddie Guerrero, who it was announced on Saturday night that uh, he will be or he will be defending the television championship against at Halloween Havoc. It will be a three-way matchup at Halloween Havoc. I believe I kind of announced it on Nitro, but it got confirmed on Saturday night. Uh, at the same time, Steiner's had a promo um, talking about wanting a shot at the tag titles. Norton had a Scott Norton had a promo about World War Three. Johnny B. Bad had a promo about his matchup against Paul Orndorff at Halloween Havoc. And Rikishi Fatu had a promo about his Halloween Havoc match against Big Bubba Rogers. And we also had Dustin Rhodes have a promo about World War Three as well as his, his future in WCW. So, not a lot of big, um, not a lot of like big, big stuff. Obviously, the biggest thing of note in uh, on the show was, was Barry Windham revealing that he's going to be teaming up with Sting at Halloween Havoc now. So that was kind of the biggest thing out of that show. But there was still some other minor things covered. We move on from that to an extremely short, four, less than four-minute match. It was three-and-a-half-minute matchup in which Big Bubba Rogers defeats Scotty Riggs in 333 by pinfall to Spine Buster. It just just a quick basic match. Rikishi Fatu was at ringside, or it was, wasn't quite a ringside, but he was, he was out kind of watching what was going on. Um, Rogers gets a quick victory. And that's about all there is to it. Not really anything of note for that, for this match here. We move on from that to uh, what's supposed to be something else happening, but instead we quickly go backstage because Paul Orndorff and Johnny B. Bad are having a pull-apart brawl backstage where security has to get involved, separate the two of them, 56 rating for the segment, as uh, clearly there is some animosity between these two that continues to build up as we head into the pay-per-view. After that, we get what's supposed to happen there, which is blank interview in Hard on Heat. <laughs> I don't know why that happened, but essentially this is a Harlem Heat promo where they talk about their opponents at Havoc, none other than the Blue Bloods. They talk about defending the titles uh, and looking forward to potentially taking on the Steiner brothers. They, they actually kind of look past the Blue Bloods and kind of tease the idea of Harlem Heat versus the Steiner brothers happening because they heard the Steiner brothers on Saturday night and they kind of they, they look, welcome the idea of taking on the Steiners. So there is that 65 rating for that segment. We move on from that to an exceptional matchup which Dustin Rhodes uh, defeats Chris Benoit in 1128 by pinfall the Bulldog, thanks to a distraction from Dean Malenko. Of course, those two have been having issues over the last few weeks or so, and they uh, that is going to be leading to a matchup at Havoc as uh, Halloween Havoc that is as well. 79 rated matchup here as Dustin Rhodes gets a gets a little bit of an upset victory. Dustin Rhodes doesn't really have a whole lot going for him right now. Um, he teamed up with Savage at Fall Brawl, but outside of that, he didn't really have he doesn't have really have a whole lot of direction right now in WCW, but he gets a, a victory over a member of the Four Horsemen. I mean, granted, it was by a distraction, but still a victory over the four, member of the Four Horsemen, so we'll have to see if that leads to anywhere thing with him. After that, we move on to a Taskmaster promo, where he's very, very confident about his behemoth man set on destruction known as the Giant Destroying Cactus Jack at Halloween Havoc. Um, essentially having you know, essentially having all the confidence in the world for Giant to get the victory. Cactus interrupts Taskmaster, but he doesn't actually say anything. He just he comes out and just kind of stares down the Giant and Giant. It, Taskmaster looks like he's getting ready to hold back the Giant, but the Giant just kind of puts his hand up, and just says no. Like he doesn't actually say it, but he's just like no, don't. Don't worry about holding me back. And he just stares at the cactus. So we just have a stare down between Cactus Jack and the Giant heading into Halloween Havoc in a very tense moment that the crowd gets fired up for because, oh my god, this is going to be crazy. So that's that. That's the the uh, kind of final build for that storyline is we just get a tense stare down between the two as they uh, get ready for a what's going to be one hell of a, of a match at 
that Halloween Havoc for sure. And then, in the main event, slightly underwhelming, but that's all right. In an exceptional matchup, Brian Pillman and Ric Flair defeat Barry Windham and and Sting in 1455 when Ric Flair pins Barry Windham with a quick cradle. So he gets the victory, proving that he is the the number one guy in WCW and, and could take on anybody and everybody. And he gets a victory over Barry Windham. Uh, it was by a quick cradle, but it wasn't cheating. It wasn't tainted. It was just a quick flash victory. It was kind of out of nowhere, but it, he did get the clean victory, surprisingly. So 76 rating for that one there. And after that, in typical go-home pay-per-view fashion, we got a brawl to end the show. My God, <laughs> as out from the back, as as uh, the four men from the main event have issues with each other, out from the back comes Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader. They immediately start going after their opponents at Halloween Havoc, Sting and Barry Windham, Pillman and Flair suddenly. See Austin and Savage come running out, and they get into a fight with them. And the Nitro ends with fights happening all over the place. Uh, two people, uh, Wyndham and Vader, are fighting in the ring. Bam Bam and and Sting are fighting outside the ring. Austin and Pillman have made their way, have been making their way through the crowd at this point. Flair and Savage are fighting up the entrance ramp. I mean, there's just chaos everywhere. And and you got Tony Schiavone on the microphone saying, Oh my God, that's crazy. That's a crazy. We'll see you at, at All the Way to Havoc. My God. Like, he's just going nuts about it. So that is the end of Nitro this week, which does get a 78 rating, increasing popularity in 11 regions. Um, I got something building up on the pre-show, so I can't show you that for Nitro, but... Yeah, um, pretty strong show. Uh, kind of hope that the main event match would have been a little bit better, but other than that, pretty strong show. Um, pretty strong show indeed. So we are now on the road to Halloween Havoc. For those who are not familiar with the series, um, I have done this, I've started this out where every episode of Nitro shows up on Mondays, except for one week where it showed up on Tuesday for various reasons. But anyway, uh, for those who so yeah so every monday we get the the episode of nitro on on uh on the youtube channel however outside of that we when we have we have pay-per-views they are you know whenever we get to that pay-per-view weekend we have that pay-per-view happening at the same time therefore next weekend on sunday you will be seeing an episode the episode of halloween havoc showing up on the youtube channel then 24 hours later, or roughly about 24 hours later, the next day, you will see the follow-up Nitro. That's right, you will get two episodes of the series in one week, as that will be happening, showing up on the YouTube channel, which you can gladly watch all of the episodes before this in the build-up to that, for sure. By the way, just so you guys see it for this week as well, Ratings War, um, we've, we're, we did 10 points less than, than Raw, uh, rating wise and we had 300,000 less pe- viewers so WCW is still not quite there but it makes sense because we don't have that super big popularity however I will spoil it by saying that as long as Halloween Havoc does not turn out to be a huge bombshell in w- in this world's WCW's history uh, that show should put us up into medium status we are at small right now and actually, you know, I can pull that up really quick for you so you can see that on here without, uh, move that slightly so you don't get spoiled by something there. Um, as you see there, we are at 58 popularity in the Southeast. And all we need to do to get to medium size is a 59 popularity in the home region of the Southeast plus 35 in one of the other ones, which we're over that. So Halloween Havoc barring it completely blowing up in our faces should put us over up to 59 in the Southeast and should put us at medium size, which then opens up a lot of stuff in TW. It opens up our house shows. It opens up better, better uh, TV deals and better event deals, you know, better broadcasting deals in general and a lot of other stuff. But that is going to do it for this episode. I have been Sierra Daredevil bringing you all of the live action and we will see you in six days for Halloween Havoc.